Hey everyone, Dan Julian here, nurse practitioner for Dan Aesthetics Medical. Today we're continuing our neuromodulator series working on the lower aspect of the face, chin, masseter, platysma band, and Nefertiti lift. Let's get right into it. <laughs> asking yourself, are you serious? The chin, why would you place neuromodulators there? Well, it really does depend on the client. First of all, if you're placing neuromodulators for the upper face, that means these muscles are relaxed. You might notice that the lower face and these muscles might compensate and become more active. For example, if you're opening up your phone, you catch yourself doing one of these, that might be because these aren't as active anymore, especially if you didn't catch yourself doing that earlier. So if you're moving the chin a lot more, then this is a nice way just to balance out the face and relax the lower aspect of the face. Other people that might benefit from a little chin talks are going to be anyone whose chin is active every time they're speaking and potentially causes this sulcus right here, noticing this little ridge there, or even at rest, sometimes their chin is just dimpled, also known as peau d'orange, and this will relax that. So let's bring in our assistant Stuart and highlight the chin, how the muscles separate into two. Often enough, I'll catch people trying to place neuromodulator up here and you might be wasting the product because the muscles actually connect at the bottom here. So if you are going to place it in the middle, place a couple units right here, and then I do recommend placing it on each side into the chin in order to relax both sides. And that should take care of this little crease there. All right, now we're moving on to the masseter muscles, which are these guys right here right when I'm clenching. I may treat those for one of two reasons typically. One is going to be either pain from TMJ, clenching, grinding, anything like that, or it's going to be for facial slimming because if that muscle is pretty active or even hyperactive, then what it can do is grow and it can square out the face. So if you wanna taper someone's face, usually feminine clients, someone who wants a more feminine feature, then what you can do is block that out by using a high dose of neuromodulator. At this point, you're using it for something different, right? You're not relaxing the muscle, you are actually blocking it completely and therefore it has time to atrophy or shrink. Think of your leg or arm going into a cast. You're not using it anymore, so whenever you take off the cast, the muscles shrink significantly. And that's basically what we're doing here. We're blocking out the effects. And you can usually do that with a dose of 20 to maybe even up to 40 units, depending on the client and how strong their muscles are. But there are guidelines and tricks on how to do that. Let's get into that next. All right, let's bring in Stuart and we've identified the masseter. I want you to pay attention right here where I've placed a little line one centimeter behind it. And that's really important. And the reason why is because of this muscle right here. This is the rosorius muscle. This muscle is what makes you smile or it's the primary smiling muscle right here. It pulls back as I smile and it inserts into this muscle right here, the master, which is what we're touching. Neuromodulators will disperse by about a centimeter. So if I place it too close to the front, it might hit this muscle and it might affect your smile. So this is why we always have to identify the front of the master. So you clench, go right in front of it, and then in back, you're gonna identify one centimeter and then you're gonna do your injections behind there. The other thing that I like to do is keep them nice and low. I don't want to go as high as the rosorius muscle if I don't have to, because this muscle is going to insert somewhere into this muscle and it might be further back, it might be further anterior. So to keep it safe, I will place it lower. And this is usually where the bulk of the muscle is anyways. So as I clench, I'm going to place my, let's say 20 units right here divided into three. Now notice that I have one circled up here. This is for someone who has a lot of pain higher and has a very active master muscle that's actually much higher as well. You can place this higher as well, but look how posterior I am. I'm way back here just to give me the chance and safety that I'm not going to affect this rosorius muscle and I don't screw up their smile. All right, the last tip with the master muscle is that it's actually divided into two planes, one deep and one superficial. And if you only place it all deep, then you might miss hitting the superficial muscle, and then that one can compensate and grow a little bit more, causing a lump. So make sure you place most of your product deep, but some superficial, and that will save you. All right, now we're moving our way to the neck, and we're gonna be focusing on the platysma bands, which are these bands right here. And a lot of times women who are lean, who are fit, 
might not like the appearance of those bands, especially in the middle here, because sometimes it gives the illusion of having almost a turkey neck where it could just be an accentuated band. So we can soften those up with neuromodulators. And they are a little tricky to do, so I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to do that. So basically, you're gonna have to get your client to flex the band. So once they flex the band, you have to pinch it, and as they're staying flexed, you have to inject deeply into the band. If you miss it, and now you're only in the skin, then it won't work. You really do have to grab the band and they have to stay flexed. I'm gonna show you my pattern on how I do that with our other assistant, Sarah. What's going on, Sarah? So we have two of the affected bands. You can do the side ones if you'd like, but the main ones that most women like to have treated are going to be these two. And I usually do about 12 to 15 units per band. These are tricky to do, so remember, space them out. Don't go too high up near the mandible, maybe two inches down, so you're not affecting any of the smile or the smile muscles and yeah I probably wouldn't do all the bands as well you could but it could affect their swallowing and it could also affect some of the strength of their neck so just be mindful of that go slow do two bands at a time have them follow up in a couple weeks and if you need a touch-up you can do your touch-up all right so now there's a perfect segue into the Nefertiti lift which is hitting the platysma muscle and band but let's talk about the difference here so this is Sarah, and she has a platysma muscle, just like all of us, which is the main muscle of the neck. And its main purpose whenever it's contracted is to pull down. And is one of the contributing factors of why we end up getting a little jowling here, because these muscles are pulling down as we mature. Just like the DAOs here, whenever we frown, this muscle is actually being pulled down whenever we contract, and when we hit that with the neuromodulator, it relaxes it, and it kicks it up a bit. Same thing with the platysma muscle. So what we're going to do is target most of the muscle underneath the jaw with neuromodulator, and we're also going to target most of the band that's pulling closest to the jowl, which is this one right here that one, right? So whenever we did the bands in front, we were really targeting these. And this is where this treatment gets a little confusing for a lot of people. They don't know what the difference is between the bands treatment or the Nefertiti lift. It's actually really similar because in theory, if you're doing every band on the neck, you're definitely going to get a relaxation of the entire platysma and you will get a little lift. This little extra treatment along the lower end of the jawline is just going to accentuate that and help you get a little bit more kick up. So the same thing, right, as we did before, what you'll want to do is have them accentuate the band, grab it, and you're going to have them stay flexed and you've got to poke inside that band. A couple units down the band, maybe for a total of eight to 10 units, and then after that you're going to do the same thing along the jawline, except the difference here is you don't have to get them to make that accentuation. They can be relaxed here, and this band is very superficial. As long as you're breaking through the skin, you can place little drops in here, two units each, and that will be enough to kick everything up. It's a very subtle lift, but it is worth it. You're looking at about 14 units per side. So that's it for me today, guys. So if you like this video, make sure you join my Patreon because we're doing these injections on real clients and it's designed for serious medical aesthetics providers just like you. Stay tuned for our next series where we're talking more on neuromodulators. And until the next time, take care of yourselves, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Cheers, guys. Take care. <laughs>